Someone once said if you want to enjoy the sunshine, you have to weather the storm. Uh, and I'm afraid the outlook for this album is particularly gloomy. The Cure's early 80s album established that uh, kind of goth milieu that's uh, associated with this band, accompanied by the Robert Smith nonchalant roll of the eyes. 80s rock prophet of gloom, if you will. Although I must admit some of their albums uh, actually seemed quite jaunty, quite commercial, he says, lowering his voice. But with disintegration, we get some serious navel-gazing, a bleak meditation on relationships doomed or not. And every song, quite tellingly, is in a minor key. And it's an album that's cold, dark, claustrophobic and crowded with images of drowning. If we hearken back to the pornography album, some say their best album, we get that opening line, doesn't matter if we all die. My God, that's pretty bleak stuff. Yeah, the first line on the Disintegration album is, uh, I think it's dark and looks like rain. Isn't quite as bleak, but nevertheless it redefines, I think, what this band is with that meditative uh, jangle of grouchiness. But not everybody was as, as enamoured with this album as I am. In fact, Melody Maker said, and I'm quoting, The Cure have almost invisibly stopped making pop records. This album is challenging, claustrophobic, poignant, but often tedious. The Cure very much on this record have taken their musical sensibilities established in the 80s and slowed it all down, stretching it out like uh, some Eno-esque goth sprawl. It's a crawling and darkly seductive album. I would argue mesmerising, in fact, in, in some places the, um, the opening of the album is just uh, absolutely fantastic. Especially with the icy, detached pictures of you, I think, which is the second track on the album. These emotionally fraught soundscapes pulsate and stir and certainly contribute to the overall atmosphere of this record. The ominous fascination streak to the eerie lullaby. It's fitting, if not a tad ironic, that uh, Disintegration would be perhaps one of the most commercially popular albums. In Robert Smith's world, relationships are kind of picked apart. Uh, good ones are shot through with morbid overtones and failed relationships are, well, simply just that. The most upbeat song on this record is Love Song, which describes only a temporary respite from misery. He sings, uh, whenever I'm alone with you, you make me feel like I'm fun again. Wow, self-damning with faint praise. But it's leisurely, it's monumental, and these songs have a majesty and grace and sail by the listener like some goth ocean liner. And the sailing analogy with this song is perhaps pertinent as uh, many bars go by before the actual vocals come in. We get this droning bass and guitar lines. I think one critic said that uh, the slow tempos drive serenely through the gaping spaces in the music. The maudlin gush of self pity in tiny little swathes of sound. A whole generation that have imbibed the happy griminess of this band hail disintegration as a goth masterpiece. More cinematic than pop, it's grand, sweeping, it's barren as well. Uh, in many ways, I, I sometimes wonder if it's a befitting tribute to Bowie's Low. I think a lot of music that emerged from the 80s is a befitting tribute to David Bowie in one form or another. I mean, the 80s saw this band cultivate, I think, that goth icon look that resonated with uh, uh, many dispossessed youngsters like myself at the time. The 1987 double album, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, is quite kind of radio friendly. It's probably the most um, palatable of albums, I think. But Disintegration is something different. It's at 71 minutes, it's a bit of a stretch, this slow, dark, contemplative, sensual introspection. I mean, the opening song is a, a real triumph and very much sets the tone. It starts off with a jangle of wind chimes. It's a perfect introduction uh, to this album. 20 seconds of ominous bass, synths and drums all converging in this, this uh, upsurge of gothness. It certainly welcomes us into the rather emotionally shady world of this album. And what an opening line, as I've already quoted. Uh, it's dark and looks like rain, you said. The wind is blowing like it's the end of the world, you said. The pathetic fallacy here is perfect, as the dismal weather is synonymous with the emotional state explored. As well as a, a kind of a perspective on life. As the listener is drowned in this downpour of gloom and emotion. You can certainly see how it appealed to 
many of us going through those teen years when everything you feel is uh, seems excruciating, crucial, and essential. Sadness, longing, lust, joy, or whatever. Pictures of you is like an eight-minute song with a two-minute intro, believe it or not, a smith is reveling in this almost like tortured nostalgia flicking through all these um, snaps and pictures. This melancholy barrage of images, this collage of images from a, um, a disappointing life, perhaps. In some ways, I, it reminds me of the Kinks picture book, although it lacks uh, lacks the ironic wit of Ray Davis and that feeling, that bouncy feeling of joie de vivre. Instead, we embrace this emotional malaise, encapsulated beautifully by the sentiment of the song and those glistening, wistful guitars. Disintegration, according to one critic, has the reputation of being a crumbling, woefully dark and depressive album. I think it's more morose and introspective, personally. A bit grumpy, as my mum might say. Close Down is phantasmal, and Love Song, one of the most uh, lachrymose expressions of longing and love could ever consign to vinyl. Smith sings in the present tense, as it's said to be a song he wrote for his future wife. If you read the liner notes of this album, it says, play it loud. It's designed to be played loud, and you can see why. You know, as you listen, you realise that it was intentionally crafted with breathing room in mind and designed to be airy, echoey trail that leads you, leads me anyway, to a place of comfort. Although it's a gloomy record, I, I find um, it feels like a warm bath at times for the soul. And the downcast sprawl seeps into your very centre and helps you to reconcile stuff. Feelings of love, heartbreak, joy and pain. And sometimes just uh, the desire to be heard. It's all very much apparent on this record. But one thing for sure, it's an album that's designed to make you feel something. The songs work with this steady pulse of uh, bass and guitar, assertive energetic synth lines and ethereal melodies that sparkle as you listen, of course, Robert Smith's voice uh, echoes calmly, warmly, beautifully, even as he surveys the landscape of the human condition from his own vantage point of inevitable disappointment. In the words of Rolling Stone magazine, you can be cripplingly depressed, anxious as hell, frustrated or full of self-loathing and disintegration will embrace you back. It's certainly an inclusive album in that respect, which is why I think it's an album you should definitely own. Anyway, you've been watching a video by Classic Album Review. Please be sure to click like, subscribe, share, of course. Uh, but other than that, just have a great day. Stay safe, be well, and keep listening.